All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host, Jimmy Sweats. Uh, once again, you've been formally inducted into the French mo into the French Toast Mafia podcast. Uh, it's another movie edition. Tonight we're doing Blade, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, classic Wesley Snipes movie, classic black superhero movie. Um, maybe one of the first that I had ever seen that had an African-American in the uh, superhero role. Um, and it's crazy because, you know, you, can you consider him a, a superhero? He is a bad guy himself, but he has to kill off his own people. It's kind of a crazy twist. Um, you know, we'll get into it, but uh, based off graphic novels, based off comic books, um, you know, it's uh, become, it turned into a, a trilogy and possibly more. Um, Wesley Snipes was perfect for it. Um, if, if, if you've seen his, you know, if you've seen his role in Demolition Man, um, it, it kind of reminds me of it. I think he's getting ready for this type of role with that <laughs> character uh, uh, because, you know, yeah. they give him one-liners, they let him smile, but he's still doing badass things, kick, killing people. Um, and Wesley Snipes is a really uh, perfect type of character. So let's just get into it, especially yeah. with that cast, because it's a great cast. Yeah, well, well yeah, like Liam was saying, man, this is a, this is a 1998 uh, superhero horror movie. Uh, it was directed by Stephen Norrington, who uh, who who's more noticeably uh, was famous for uh, for some projects that he did. Uh, he was uh, not only was he the director of this, but he was attached to he was originally attached to direct a lot of uh, other uh, comic book movies due to the success from this one. Uh, he was attached to direct Blade Two, which he turned down. He was uh, attached to direct the Ghost Rider movies, which he uh, turned down. Um, he was even attached to direct uh, a couple of uh, what um, the a movie based off of uh, the animated movie uh, Akira, which um, they still haven't come out with yet, uh, which is still in production as well. That never um, get yeah, I was gonna say it might <laughs> remain in production, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but uh, this guy, um, this guy had a really short-lived career, but um, but made definitely made an impact. Uh, also, this movie was written uh, was written by David Goyer, who uh, who I'll get into I'll get into some of his uh, his extensive work, but uh, but he uh, but David Goyer also uh, later directed Blade Three to go to coincide with what Liam was saying as far as the franchise. Uh, didn't he? I don't know if you know this. Didn't he direct the Twenty Eight Days Later or Twenty Eight Weeks Later? One of them. Uh, he directed. Um, I would think it was he directed Suicide Squad. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But, um, so he made a he made a bunch of money a long time later. There, you know, I like to oh, see yeah. that. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, so, uh, but um, this movie star it starred Wesley Snipes, and Wesley Snipes played the character of Blade, who was a, a half vampire, uh, half human. They called him a Daywalker throughout this movie. Who uh, basically he just hunted vampires. Uh, he's he was highly skilled in martial arts. And we just uh like Liam was saying, he was just a badass dude in a, in a leather trench coat. Uh, then you had uh in Bushy Wright who played uh Dr. Karen Jensen. Uh, she played a hermitologist who was uh bitten by a vampire, and she ends up becoming like the tag along uh supporting actress. Uh, not even a love interest, which was actually one that was one of the things that I liked about this movie that they didn't make her like the normal like damsel in distress like girlfriend or whatever. She did some yeah. shit that just kind of got caught up into their world. Um, so I thought that was she good. made it real. Um, she made yeah, it real. Steven. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He had uh, Stephen Dorff who played uh, Deacon Frost, who was uh, basically the villain. Uh, he was an upstart vampire who uh, who had ambitions, who had great ambitions, and uh, and influence. And he emerged as Blade's primary enemy oh, as, great as, as he was trying to take over the human race, turn everybody into mm -hmm. vampires or whatever. Or some really nice parties, yeah. Oh yeah. He yeah, goes off. Probably wouldn't attend myself, but he goes all out for his party. I mean, all, right, right. all you need to do yeah. to make the people go wild is play Blood Rave. You know, I think you need to say something about that. Right, That's right. a great song. <laughs> anyway, uh, and then uh, this movie also had uh, Chris Christopherson, 
who uh, was yeah. a legend in his own right. But yeah. he played Whistler, who uh, who was Blade's mentor and the guy that made all of his guns and whatnot. So uh, he really uh, he really kicked ass in his role. And my then, uh, ex stepdad who played, who played uh, my ex stepdad who played for the Gators. He used to love Chris Christopherson. Mm-hmm. He had his audio tape. He used to play him in his Jeep all the time. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, Sanai Lathan, who uh, has a relatively small role in this movie, but she plays uh, Blade's mom, Vanessa Brooks. Okay. So uh, this movie, this movie throughout its uh, its run, its international its run, uh, it was made on a forty five million dollar budget, and it uh, it grossed one hundred and thirty one million dollars uh, in the box office, which uh, at this time, you know, it made its money back and some. So it was considered a commercial and criti- a commercial success. VHSs were still flying off the shelves then too. Oh yeah, and DVDs. Oh, man. Too. I think DVDs probably were like just starting up around this time too. So, yeah. um, also, uh, the rotten, the rotten uh, tomatoes. Uh, the fan score was seventy eight percent, and the critic score was fifty five percent. So, so yeah, it did pretty well. Critics missed on this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, it was and then so bad too, that this, they made this, a couple um, more. Right. 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 <laughs> And then also to this movie had uh, a lot of it's a lot of random awards that it picked up, but it had 15 uh, award nominations, and it won over probably over half, over half of those. So um, that was that. But I also have some fun facts too that I looked that I uh, I researched and I found out about this movie. So uh, so of course as uh, Liam stated earlier. Uh, the character Blade, it was created in uh, 1973, and it was a Marvel Comics uh, character. Um, the character in the comics originally wasn't wasn't even a vampire; it was just a vampire hunter. But um, wow. but because of wow. the uh, the popularity, but because of the popularity of this movie, and the directors and the writers, they both came up with the idea that it's like, well, this just wouldn't be just cool enough if the guy just hunted vampires. Why don't we make him a vampire? So that good I'm going good for that. Yeah, so it makes it too made. easy. Guy could slip up and get bit one time, and he's done. You know, right, right, right. <laughs> right. So that twist, so that twist that they added to the movie actually ended up becoming so popular that they changed it in the comics. So, uh, in which, so, so from 1973 to 1999, this dude wasn't even a vampire. So, go figure. Um, also, too, uh, at the time when when Marvel Studios, when they were looking to begin development for this movie, uh, LL Cool J wanted to play the role of Blade. Oh, but, my um, gosh. <laughs> but, New Line Cinema, but when New Line Cinema, when they picked up the rights for the script, they uh, they didn't feel like LL Cool J was, uh, was a good choice. And they were looking to uh, cast either Wesley Snipes, Denzel Washington, or Lawrence Fishburne. And Give me Denzel Washington training day vibes on that shit. Uh, anything Denzel. Right. Yeah, you think I think I would take Denzel if uh, anybody out of those guys. It would definitely be Denzel for me. That's for sure. Right, right. So that also tells you too, because uh, that kind of tells you too about um, the power that you know we're gonna get into this too. But the power that Wesley Snipes kind of demanded in Hollywood back during that time frame too. That he was even you know mentioned amongst you know guys like Lawrence Fishburne and Denzel Washington. You know, so um, but uh, it was. This 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 uh, role kind of fell into Wesley Snipes' lap because of the fact that you know prior to this movie coming out, Wesley Snipes had spent like the better part of like six years trying to get a Black Panther movie made, in which wow. uh, which he had a big hand, yeah he had a big hand in, but for whatever reason, our uh, studios weren't trying to pick it up. So then, so when the Blade character came to us, came across his desk, he was like, "Well, if I can't get Black Panther done, I'll snatch this role up." So then, that's how he ended up getting that role, which um, but it also kind of tells you too because uh a big promoter proponent for him getting his role was from the uh, writer, David Goyer, who, uh, who just felt like Wesley Snipes was the perfect uh, choice for the role. And uh, kind of foreshadowing a bit about what we're going to talk about as far as like with, uh, with our different takes on this movie and stuff like that. But um, because of the fact that David Goyer really wanted Wesley Snipes to have this role, David Goyer, they gave Wesley Snipes an executive producer credit, and they didn't write any dialogue for Blade in the script. They wrote no dialogue. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, so they gave. What? Uh, they, yeah, they wrote no dialogue. They uh, they gave Wesley Snipes uh, power of veto over uh, 
over what he thought the Blade character would say in the movie. So a lot of all them. His career was getting that power beat him. Yeah, so a lot yeah. of the lines in his movie, so a lot of the lines in his movie were kind of ad lib from uh, Wesley Snipes for what Wesley Snipes thought Blade would say. Which is good because they only need to be like one line a lot of times, you know. And sometimes right. he does it, and most of the time he does it right, you know. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, uh, but I'm gonna get into the foreshadowing part I was talking about. So, foreshadowing okay. for something that wasn't a problem necessarily in this movie, but it ended up becoming a problem for the overall health of the franchise was the fact that uh, writer David Goyer, who is also responsible for writing some of the best comic book movies ever, like uh, the Dark Knight franchise. Uh, he wrote right. the script for Man of Steel. He did Blade One, Blade Two, um, but he also wrote some pretty bad, you know movies and some pretty bad scripts for like you know blade three uh suicide <laughs> squad uh, he wrote the script for uh the crow the crow part two city of angels and he also wrote the script for terminator dark fate man so, see um, how you're like he wrote for the crow part two and then i was like ah <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh, oh. oh. Right, right. yeah i mean right. that's some uh I mean, it's, I'll never watch that movie again, but I've seen it once. Hey, the yeah, guy yeah. got work consistently. Right, right. Yeah, so pretty much uh, with the freedom, but with the freedom and the power that they allowed Wesley Snipes over the character of Blade, <coughs> they pretty much allowed him to just make changes to scenes as they filmed based on what he thought Blade would do. So which, for instance, there was a scene in this wow. film where he that's, made, he made it. That's movie. very unique. Yeah, he made uh, where Wesley Snipes was allowed to make on uh, on, on uh, make an on the fly change to an interact to an interaction that Blade and uh and the villain Deacon Frost had, which involved a young girl on the fly, because uh, yeah. he felt like Blade wasn't your typical uh, good guy that would just stop what he was doing to go and save someone, regardless of whether or not it was a child or not. So, uh, so even though in this movie, as we talk about, you know, Blade. Numerous times in this movie, he stops doing what he's doing to go and save somebody else. Yeah. So, uh, it's kind of, you know. But he don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but he don't do that. not for a little girl, though. Like, maybe for, like, a another guy who kills people, too, or some shit. But not for a little girl. Uh, <laughs> maybe for, like, a, a, a doctor that gets bit by a vampire who reminds him of his mom or something. Maybe he'll stop yeah. what he's doing to save her, but not a little girl. I've seen her mess some people up, too, in this movie, so... Oh yeah, oh yeah. But um, right, well, can I, can I go ahead and give you a hot take real quick? Well, yeah. well, I'm gonna add one more. I'm gonna add one more thing uh, because this okay. I know this is something that uh, me and you were. Oh, uh, so, uh, so this is about the character, uh, the the character of Deacon Frost. So, uh, Deacon Frost uh, was that role was initially offered to Jet Li. He was initially offered the role of Deacon Frost, but he opted out <laughs> to do Lethal Weapon Four instead. No. So then the studio. Yeah, so then the studio <laughs> reached out to Mark Wahlberg and they asked Wal Mark Wahlberg would he be would he consider himself for the role of Deacon Frost. See the studio wanted a villain oh who, my uh, gosh. Who, wouldn't, who wouldn't be one dimensional and someone who would be realistically a physical threat to uh to Wesley Snipes. But they ended up settling <laughs> on the door because they didn't even though they didn't want the character to be one dimensional or easily intimidated by Blade, they ended up just selecting uh Steven Dorf as the villain. So uh what do you guys think about that cast and choice? Uh I mean Jet Lee would have been good, Mark Wahlberg would have been weird. Yeah. I don't know if I see Mark Wahlberg doing that in like a weird Boston accent. I can see it now. You're but from I, I, the harbor? Cool. Are you going to the harbor? There's a lot of blood around there. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Jet Lee would been a really nice one. I mean, I think I would be crazy for, would be, to see him fight uh, Wesley Snipes in one of these fast paced scenes. That would be fucking insane. Yeah. It would be yeah. more believable than seeing him fight Steven Dorff fast paced. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen a cigarette blue commercial with Steven Dorff. He smokes a good cigarette in this uh, in this movie. You know, <laughs> uh, later, I've seen, like a couple of years ago, I seen a commercial with him. Cigarette Blue, those electronic cigarettes, you know. Nice. <laughs> I was like, that's the guy from Blade. You know? 
Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, John, what do you think about, um, instead of like Mark Wahlberg, what about his doppelganger? You think Matt Damon could have pulled the role off? Not that he probably would have took the role, but you think he could have pulled it off? No. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, maybe. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like uh, this guy as a villain. I didn't like him at all. He, he didn't really do a whole lot for me. Um, and I don't know if it was because of how he played this character or just how the character was written, especially when you come to find out that the writer didn't even like give a half of these guys dialogue. He was just like, Hey, Hey, just, what do you think? He was, what do you think he'll say? You know? So yeah, he plays a good little shit though. You know what I mean? I kind of felt like the, uh, the sidekick was actually like a better villain in this movie. Uh, that guy's little henchman, dude whose arm, whose hand and arms keeps getting cut off. Oh, yeah, Donald Logue, is that his name? Donald Logue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah he's been I, in Vikings. Like he's he's been in a bunch of stuff, man. I like that yeah. guy. I actually like yeah. that choice right there. Yeah, I think uh, I felt like... What about right Willem Dafoe? You think Willem Dafoe would have been able to be some real Oh, creepy? man. He definitely could play a, I mean, vampire. He like a vampire. He vampire. looks like a vampire real life. He looks like a vampire. <laughs> yeah, he definitely looked like a vampire. I think I think I, I think that they should have found somebody though that could like fight who could have fought Wesley Snipes. Cause... All right, what about Danny Trejo? That's my last yeah. one. Danny Trejo. Hey, that's well, he then that would line up too. with what Jock said, man. You needed to get someone that could actually physically match up. Like I don't believe that Steven Dorf could be whooping Wesley Snipes' ass, man. Yeah, they should have. Yeah, they should have put Jet Li as a vampire, but I don't think he was yeah. like. A... Um, yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but I'm going to make the movie better real quick. So, uh, <laughs> I think that the movie would have been better if you switched uh, the Dr. Jen Karen Jensen actress. Uh, what's her name? Uh, in, in, in Bushy, right? Switch uh, Karen Jensen, that actress, and Sana Lathan. Switch them up. Let them play each other's roles. I think Sana Lathan would have gave me more as like the lead female. Okay, yeah, I'm with that. Uh, yeah, that lady, she looked uh, the lady on uh, Bushy Wright who played uh, Dr. Karen Jensen. She looks more like she could have been Wesley Snipes' uh, mom than Sonia Lathan did. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Make her the not love interest, but you know, she's talking. I think she could have been more sassy and give me a little bit more. The other girl has kind a of little crazy. more, a little oh. more sexy, a little more. Oh, you know, lady just has a straight face all the time. Like Dr. Yeah. Karen. <laughs> Give me some emotion too here. Plain. Yeah. She's too like plain. Like you were a vampire yesterday. Give me something here. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she, she, yeah. Which, yeah, cause, yeah, well, we'll get into that. My, something my to where life. we only may have one night before I turn. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, she didn't really seem like she was too... She didn't, yeah, she didn't really seem like she was too pressed about getting bit by a vampire in this movie. Like, give me like Halle Berry or something, man. Just give me something a little bit more. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, she, yeah, that would be a nice work by vampire. Yeah, but uh, y'all ready to get into the movie? Oh yeah, let's go. Yeah. All right, well, uh, let's get the let's go and just go ahead and get it off tape. Let's talk about the opening scene after the hospital, the club. Let's talk about yeah. the club. Him. So, 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 what did y'all have a favorite kill in the club? Um, my favorite general my favorite. shot. All of it was great. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, all of it was awesome. Uh, I mean, I think uh, the part where the part where he tells uh, he tells the the henchman, I think his name was Quinn. I think that was the guy's name in the movie Quinn. He yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> of course it was. Like, you know? <laughs> He's like, I'm tired of slicing. I'm tired of slicing you up, Quinn. How about I try <laughs> fire it? Uh, yeah, he sets him on fire, and then the police show up. I thought that was like, well, that's cool. So, Liam, how pointless was the opening part with the, the random guys riding in the car with the chick and then he's walking through the club? Like, I don't feel like we needed that. No, I don't either. Uh, I was going to say uh, because, you know, I told my girlfriend, you know, here we are. I was making some food and I, I started playing it on the TV in the kitchen, you know, and I said, I'm going to stand here and start watching this movie while I do this. And... uh she was like, all right, what is this? And I was like, it's this fucking vampire movie from the, from the 90s. Like, you probably wouldn't like it. And, uh, <laughs> and I was like, it's called Blade. And she was like, okay, you know? And uh, <laughs> so 
here we are and uh this guy is just being over the top stupid i feel like you know he's just like yeah. going up to random people in the club be like yeah woo! and uh look i'm just gonna put it out there he looked like, like a guy that's about to get killed or you you know really you know too well that something bad is gonna happen to this guy like if red flag like you don't go if you're like oh yeah let's go to a club it's in a meat locker like uh, oh yeah no. I'm out. Like what? That means you're yeah. supposed. That means you're hiding something that you're doing down there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm out. I'm immediately out. <laughs> yeah, I always thought. It, I thought it was interesting that uh, that as soon as he walks in the club, like everybody stops what they're doing and they're all like looking at him, like as he's walking in the club. And it's like that's that never, never good. That yeah, never uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like that should have been a red flag too. Like, oh wait, fuck. Any movie ever, uh, that means normally they cut the music like, you know, but uh, <laughs> that's another red flag that they didn't necessarily cut the music like that. Yeah. That's another one. We got a couple of them going in. So uh, an even awesome moment, even better moments when the guy crawls up into Blade and it's like 50, 60 vampires, like, oh, shit, that's him. Right. <laughs> It's like, like crazy blood, uh, the sprinklers, yeah. that yeah, shit's yeah, yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. But like 50 to 60 vampires are literally staring at this guy like, we're about to fucking die. And Jock, yeah. I think you told me this. Like, so how quick would you have ran? Would you have waited for the first sparkly dust person to pop up? Or would you have just been like, I'm out? <laughs> what would you have done, Jock? I mean, as soon as they, as soon as somebody would say, "Oh shit, it's Blade," I'd have been out of there. Cause yeah. uh, this guy. Anytime like, someone goes, it's like, him. <laughs> 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 yeah, this guy, this guy has obviously, uh, this guy has a reputation. He's obviously earned that reputation, and I'm not trying to find out what that reputation is. I'm out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to find out how he earned that bitch either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't need to know. <laughs> I just on, know man. he has one, dog. But uh, I mean, a name like Blade too. I mean, come on, bro. <laughs> the name alone, like no, no. Yeah, but I mean, say I, I'll, I'll let y'all know now. Like you know, we're all boys. <laughs> if I see one of y'all get cut into sparkly dust, like I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll get revenge for you another time. Like I can't do nothing when I see sparkly dust. That's me next. Like I no, no, no. Hey, I'm sorry. We're best homeboys, but I knew you weren't human after that. I saw <laughs> you just dissipate. Like, oh shit. I guess I was wrong. And you start running. <laughs> I guess I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'm out on all the sparkly dust shit. Oh, and shit. I'll put that out. <laughs> This is Deacon Frost party, so can we give Deacon Frost like all the credit for the party or great, yes. What a promoter. Yeah. yeah. And he actually yeah. meets with the Council of Vampires and they said, You're gonna stop this. And he's like, I don't have to do shit. My clubs are balling. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then uh, you know, obviously Queen gets pinned to the wall and set on fire. The cops show up, they take Quinn. I guess to like a morgue, I guess. Where is he at? It's like a hospital, a morgue, something like that. Yeah, they think. Yeah, they think right. they take him to uh, where you take dead people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So here's another thing. Do y'all believe that Karen and this guy had some sort of relationship? Because I mean, she be shooting Oh, real. that was such bullshit. Like, nah. <laughs> like I'm nah. Hey, that's <laughs> another part that my girl was in the kitchen for, just watching, and she goes, "What?" You know? <laughs> yeah, no. I was like, this is, I don't know, because the actor, he kind of fucked that up. I don't know. Yeah, he was he was rough. But uh, yeah. they look at the body, and then, like, as they're cutting it up, Quinn comes to life and, like, grabs that guy, his neck and shit, and gets her. And then she sees Blade down the hallway doing Wesley Snipes, <clears throat> cool ass, cool ass motherfucking shit, coming down the yeah. hallway. I just want to say, when he gets bit, sometimes when they bite people, it just kills them. Sometimes when they bite people, they turn. Did that that other doctor, he must eventually turn or something, right? Well, I'm going to get to that later. Yeah, we're going to okay, get to that Okay, later. yeah, keep going, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, 
So, you know, that guy escapes, he jumps through a window into, like, some car and shoots out. He flies down the street naked running. And then Blade jumps <laughs> and throws – what accuracy by Blade throw – like, what would his uh, accuracy rating be on Madden with that throw he had, throwing her on that soft stuff like a building the way? <laughs> what do you think, Josh? What you got? What would the accuracy rating be on Madden? I mean, well, when I saw him throw her, I was like, holy shit, he threw her into <laughs> – like, he literally threw her from one building to the next. Like, I was like, I ain't missing anything. He like he threw he just threw her and it was just like well fuck it so um yeah his his uh his accuracy rating he's probably like Pat oh Mahomes I'm out. watching it right now ah! yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean it's like a 97 accuracy 94 yeah. throwing power that's pretty good yeah he yeah, him he him. It in the bread basket and then not only that he jumps yeah and also makes it so this guy's like top yeah, notch. That's the equivalent of putting the putting the shot exactly in the same shot, you know? Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, that just shows you, like, how awesome this guy is all the way around. I wonder if Wesley Snipes was like, what if I throw her from here to another building that the other guy jumped out of the window and didn't make it, like, yeah. four feet? As, wow. As she's, like, fading, as she's fading, like, in and out of consciousness after being yep. bit by a vampire. Only yeah, and, sure. and, and also... She dislocated her shoulder. That could come into play yeah. later. Yeah, he has to uh, yeah. set her shoulder right there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He does. He has to uh, put her shoulder back in. And then uh, the cops, uh, let's see. Oh, this is when they go to the headquarters. When Blade takes her back to the headquarters and Whistler's like, you should have killed her. And then I don't know why this made me laugh. He like <laughs> injects her with garlic. Like, that's your go-to move. Let's put some garlic in her blood. That'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's simple. I that's, thought you were a professor in this shit, bro. I could have thought of that. Like, <laughs> he gives her 50-50. And, I mean, Jock, so out of all the things, do you think it was – so Whistler's already – what's he at for smartness when you injecting garlic? Is that your go-to for a vampire? I mean, I would have I would have definitely liked to have seen the numbers on, like, how many times that actually worked. Or like, is that, was, is that right. something that was, you know, like, was there a case in which this possibly worked? Because I mean, because when he said, "Oh, well, it's garlic," I was like, "God, oh, come on, bro, seriously." Confident. Like, no fucking way. It, so he it, definitely. Is, there's no way it's that simple. So it had to have happened. Had to have worked before if he's giving her fifty-fifty. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like I need I need um, different odds than that. I mean, a lot of things are fifty-fifty if you just say it's gonna work or it won't. I mean, you can classify <laughs> anything as fifty-fifty, bro. Down to it, you know. Yeah, I mean, he, it just, I just don't think if you've been through this enough times, which it seems like he's been doing it a while, like your go-to move is garlic. You haven't figured anything else out. Like, what are you? Mm-hmm. Oh, they what say are you like doing? they say they at least say essence of garlic. So. Yeah, and I mean, and then too, even if it was, even if garlic did work, I mean, he only gave her like one shot. You would have thought he would have been giving her like multiple shots, like over time, like to like really get that shit in her system or something. Like, I figure one shot went and do the job. Yeah, yeah, because um, she seemed to get bit as hard as that other dude, and uh, yeah. oh, but she's she's yeah, borderline. Was, she's borderline. You know. <laughs> I mean, when Buddy bit her, he locked on her. He got a lock, then he shook a little <laughs> he bit. He looked like, like a like a pit bull. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, all right, then it moves on to uh, the vampire elites are in their meeting room. Whatever this group of guys is, they bring Frost in, tell him his nightclubs are getting a bunch of people killed, basically because of Blade. <laughs> like he shouldn't be out in the open, and then he he essentially like talks shit and then threatens them and then leaves, and they're just like, all right, I guess this guy's cool now. Oh, uh, he's just a young gun. Don't worry about him. Yeah. That's also another bad government move. A lot of bad moves, I feel like, are happening to start this movie. But I'm in on them. But this is bad moves. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, when I saw him, uh, when I saw him threaten him, I was like, whoa, like, y'all gonna let that slide? Like, <laughs> like I mean, you're telling me this young you know, little dude is uh, more powerful than all your old vampires that have been here for hundreds of years and all this shit. I mean, 
That's what they say. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, he sounds like to me, he sounds like he was a problem. So, I mean, if he was that big of a problem, like he would have had to go. Exactly. They would have just got rid of him. If y'all really been yeah. around and successful for this long, then yeah, he would have had to go. Somebody had to have uh, made a fuss before, and that's how you're still around. You get rid of the problem, bro. Yeah, and then this next scene is awesome when he goes and gets a serum from that guy because they have the handshake and shit, which makes me feel like they fall yeah. in higher also so like i need yeah. a sequel with just him and blade because i need to, or a prequel i need to know what they thought what, what kind of ass they will to get a cool handshake like that i know there's a past beyond the handshake right. yeah i would have uh i would have yeah, liked, liked that scene more, more of that yeah i would have liked to see like more of that relationship like who was that guy was that like one of his homeboys was that like his brother or something like like where this guy come from like how you know this guy and Obviously, I mean, obviously he knows what Blade's doing because he's making him a serum, so he obviously knows that's what he's doing. So yeah, uh, hey, I, I want to yeah, I want to follow up what Jock said just right there. Is um, uh, you know, that part right there. He goes, you know, you're a week early, and he's like, I know, and he's just kind of. They both just kind of know, like that means like you're developing a tolerance, and he's just like, I thought that would happen, man, and uh, yeah, nothing else is said after that. Just. Hey man, give me a hug, and he just says, "Man, stay safe, man. Like, yeah. we'll do the best we can because it's just an unspoken thing right there. They don't know what the fuck you're gonna do after that. After what? After that serum? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then uh, Karen wakes up, and I guess like this is either a guest room or Blade's room, one or the other. But uh, Blade had some incense on the table, which I mean, he's he's definitely smoking some weed. I'm putting it out there. <laughs> like, he has incense all over the place burning, and it's like, come on, Blade. We know it's going to pull the real shit out. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> is it Blade or Blaze, you know? <laughs> he, like, looks around the house, <laughs> finds mom ID, some guns. For you. She, like, finds the sword <clears throat> that, uh, like, cuts people's fingers off and puts it down right before it would have cut her fingers off. Hey, you don't want to see what happens when you open up his stash box, bro. Yeah, she's doing a little too much snooping. <laughs> if I just saw a thing of guns, it's like, all right, I should probably not be looking into everything. I mean, that's what females do, though. Females always be going through your medicine cabinets and shit and in your phones, and I wasn't surprised by that. And essentially, she walks in on Blade getting a serum from Whistler, which looks really painful. And then, like, yeah. Wesley chases her, and Blade chases her, and then they get her. And also, Wesley Snipes really likes to make a – he really likes to do the scenes to where he's in pain. You know what I'm saying? To where he's yeah. like, rrr, rrr. <laughs> He loves that, yeah. man, because it makes him look stronger. He was going too. for an Oscar. Like, he thought this was an Oscar role. You could tell he was all in. I, I mean – I loved it. I uh, was going to say earlier to you guys, I mean, I saw this bitch in theaters with my dad, man. This shit is special to me, so. Well, to add on that, like, there's a moment when he's taking that shit and Whistler's holding his hand, and you see, like, yeah, I, as I a bro, you know? Like, I got you, man. <laughs> and then uh, Blaze essentially tells her to leave town or they'll kill her. And then Whistler gives her vampire mace. Which I think he said is more garlic. Like, what, is that all you have around here? It's fucking garlic? Like, you got nothing else to kill anything with? At least give me a gun, dog. <laughs> yeah, then Blade essentially drops her off in the um, in the middle of the city. Like, he just, like, yeah. run. Yeah, I really <laughs> feel like uh, they just kind of dumped her off after that. I was uh, surprised how short they were at that point, you know? Yeah. And like, then, I told uh, you our entire operation, but... Here you are. Get out. Get out. <laughs> They're after you. <laughs> we got, and then after that, we got one other. Yeah, get out. <laughs> after you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got uh, one of the vampire elites, which he'll come in later, comes into Frost trying to decipher an ancient vampire text. And the elite just randomly slaps Frost. Like, I don't know. Is that their yeah. way of getting in line? He just threatened you and you slap him? Like, what do you think is going to happen now? Yeah, he was clearly was mad about that choice. One of us got to you go, man. You can see. One of us got to go. I think uh, I think Dave Chappelle said this once that uh, like, or no, it was Charlie Murphy said that like you know back in the days you know of the the Wild West and even you know during medieval times, if you slapped another man, that was just something you didn't do. 
You know, well, what like mean? somebody you know, had like, to go you know, after that. Gotta go. Somebody got to go, man. You got to have a sword okay. fight or a gunfight or something. So, but then we have another questionable move. Move after that, Jock. Um, the elite leaves, but only after Frost rubs on his face. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, what the hell are vampires doing here? Like, I don't know. Is that your response to a slap? Or? Well, I mean, they, one thing they did you- like a weird thing with Stephen Dorff. They made him like really essential in this role, kind of too. It's really weird. Yeah. Well, uh, one the main thing that I ended up that I got from all of this interaction up until this point that all these vampires are soft. These vampires soft as hell. They soft so as hell. They, there no way. It ain't no way it's going down like this if I'm a vampire. Ain't no way. Nah. So then the girl is. They told her to leave town. She goes straight home. That's her first goal to go to, and she sees two like vampire helpers, I guess. And he then told a cop. me to leave, leave town, so I went straight home. <laughs> yeah. So he goes back in her bags, and a random cop walks in, and she sprays him with the garlic, and as expected, nothing happened. You know. Hey, uh, right before that, the uh, the scene to where they're in the elevator. And she notices, man, really anyone could be a vampire because she sees like the club tattoo on them. And, well, that's uh, what you want to hit on. Like, if you're going to send her out, give her like three rules. One, they can't deal with sunlight. So they won't be out in the, in the sun. So you're good. These are like vampire helpers. Don't use the garlic mace on them. It won't work. Rule oh, two. Oh, shit. Yeah. Give her, I mean, like, give her like three rules. They just dumped her off, bro. Yeah. So let's move on. <laughs> they moved on from her. So let's move on. <laughs> But then too though, but when but when Blade drops her off, he drops her off in the middle of the day. Yeah. Yeah. So how would the vampires have been out? That's what I'm saying. She's good. What? Okay, so he's a vampire helper. He's not an actual vampire. He's just a helper. But he maybe yeah, but he those didn't... people in the elevator. Those, but those they two were on the something. elevator were vampires. No, no, no. He had a tattoo too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Maybe they were familiars too, and uh, they came along with that guy or something. I guess that's an unanswerable question. Like, were they Ooh, vampires? I didn't mean to get into yeah. that, but I'm just saying uh, that that was like such an ominous scene. Um, that like helped you really, like that made it real, you know, uh, to where yeah. just anyone could be it around you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and she had to stand there in the elevator, and the guy just goes, How you doing? You know? <laughs> like that's what the fuck I would have said. How you doing? I guess Blade reads uh, vampire tattoos because he, you know, he comes in, throws a piece of guy up, throws his face on the table, and he like sees his tattoo, and he's like, he belongs to Deacon Frost. Yeah, yeah. Like, Blade, that's guy, right? tattoo connoisseur. Yeah. Yeah, cause uh, cause the dude was trafficking <laughs> uh, he was trafficking blood blood for him, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah, so the guy gets away, Blade sits in his car. He just waits on him to go back to his car. So, like, these vampires have dumbass henchmen. They're soft. No. Uh, I'm not feeling good about a vampire's eyes at this point. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, I mean... Why would you uh, allow people that aren't even... Uh, as, that don't even have the strength of a vampire to be... Yeah. You know, knowing what you're doing. Uh. <laughs> well, I think they they do they do that so that uh so that they could like have people that like operate for them like during the day or whatever, because like, they can't be out during the day. So oh they man, have, like they're familiar with they <clears throat> handle all they business. The day. That is true. Uh, that's another but thing. The- um, that's crazy. Yeah, it's just they operate in half the time of normal people. Yeah. yeah, I mean, another bad thing, the cop takes them right back to where Deacon Frost Club is. Like, that's your go-to. You took them this guy is just L after L. But, but prior to that, but prior to um the guy, the cop taking them there, Blade was, like, beating the dude's ass, like, right on the side of the street. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, I mean, Pulled a gun the, out. And this was a cop. Thanks for reminding This is a broad day, like, cop getting beat up by Blade. Nobody's doing anything. They're just walking back. And he pulled, <laughs> and he pulled his gun on him. He was going to, like, shoot him, in a, like, in the middle of the street. Yeah. And, nothing. Um, but, hey, man, like like Blade said, it was nothing but whores around there and uh, other vampires and shit, so. 
I guess it was okay. Another unanswerable. <laughs> yeah, so they go to the club after that behind them, and, like, you know, Blade kicks the guy through the door, throws him after he says he needed an invitation. Blade whoops all kind of ass, all in the bar. Yeah. And he gets to the cop, and he's yeah. like, where's the interest? And he's like, it's in the freezer. Right. Like, these guys are in meat lockers and freezers, and they're, like, taking over the world. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You can. Uh, well, hey, they did have an elevator. Phone. Once you get through that freezer, bro. yeah, he goes so. in the elevator, and they find like an archive or all their histories at apparently. And this is when you find the uh, the fat vampire. I don't so understand. So you've been writing everything down, all the legal activity. <laughs> yeah, and then like they torture the fat vampire. Hey, what hmm. what is that? That is a. Uh... Why did they need to have that character? I, that's something from the comic yeah. books, obviously. You know, it must be. It must be. That was just such yeah, a random I mean, thing. Uh, you know, that's something that yeah. my girl walked in and just goes like, "What the fuck is that?" You know, <laughs> and I was just like, "I can't really tell you." You know, I, I'm watching. I'm watching some shit for a podcast right now. You know. <laughs> yeah, and then it. Uh, <laughs> To, and while this is happening, it flashes the Frost, who's obviously throwing a party that he isn't attending. And I love all the 90s computer things he's doing, but he completes the uh, decipher on his 90s computer. And uh, he essentially tells Quinn to go get Blade alive. After Blade's been murdering, like, hundreds and like possibly thousands of vampires, he's like, go get him alive. That's possible. Oh, oh right. I'll stand quite right. a chance, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, Blade has, like, been mowing people down this whole movie up until this point. Like, I don't really see how um, how he was supposed to capture Blade, let alone bring him in alive. So, I mean, I don't – I mean, that was – I felt like he was asking for a lot with that. Yeah. And, I mean, Blade finds this uh, little girl who I guess Blade was using the Rocky method because she does the same kick, like, ten times and hits him every time. It's like – the Rocky method only works so many times, and it has to be Rocky. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be able to take a chair to the face, you know? Yeah. yeah. So then, essentially, Quinn then trap Blade. Quinn stabs Blade. But then Whistler shows up, and I guess he blows up the wall and comes in. Because <laughs> I thought it was a truck coming through, but nothing came through. It's just Me like, too. Oh. I thought it was, just, it was some kind of vehicle. But he just walks through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. He said, Did I catch you fuckers at a bad time? <laughs> hey, I mean, and I felt what I thought as I was like, man, they could have come up with something better than that. But that's just so generic that no matter who it is, it's going to sound badass. And then you kill everybody, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So then they fight, they fight Blade, they escape through some hole. And I get to uh, the train, and Blade's fighting him on the train. And one of the coolest moments for me is like when Blade's <laughs> playing the guy's face into the train, and he's right. not dying. His face is just grinding on the train. It's like, oh, all right, man. against the side of the uh, passing like wall. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, they uh, and they turned around and they did that same thing again, in, like in one of the Spider-Man movies. I think like Spider-Man like grabs like Sandman's face and. Shoves it like into a subway train that's like yeah. passing by. You just see the Oof. dirt just kicking everywhere. So. I was yeah. going to say, t uh, you know, I know what happened, but I was going to say that would be a good explanation for, for Two Face what happened to him. Got yeah, half yeah. his face yeah. run off there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like Whistler dips. Whistler just dips. He don't say nothing. He just on the other side of the train, he just jumps into a hole and he's out. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. He, he's like, all right, yeah, I did my part. Y'all figure this shit out. Remember, I mean, he's human. He's not a vampire, so he got to stick and move. Yeah. He got to go get something to eat, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Blade and them, they escape, and then uh, Blade has to inject some blood into himself to heal. <laughs> and then the next scene, this lady's so comfortable with her now since they've been around each other so long. He tells her Blade's origin and his <laughs> origin of everything mm -hmm. that happened. Yeah. Yep. Well, it wouldn't be a movie if you didn't completely divulge everything that you're doing to uh, sure. someone that yeah. you barely know, you know? <laughs> you got to tell, tell all your secrets. 
And yeah. just like a villain, like they got to tell you their entire plan and before then they kill after, you. Blade and Karen have one of those heart to hearts. And uh, he's, he essentially says he's been hunting the person who <clears throat> bit his mom and turned him into this. Which obviously yeah. that was going to play later. And, uh, and then it goes to Quinn, who's freaking out because Frost is still trying to get him to go get Blade alive after he's got his fucking face smashed against the train. And he's got his hand for a second time. He cut his hand yeah, out. Yeah, right, he got his hand time. for a second time. You're right, you're right. And I want to say something about that earlier. I love the line to where he pulls out his nasty hand to where they make that kind of real, too. Like, <laughs> yeah, as a vampire, we can regenerate, but it may not look good the second time, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and it didn't look good. He goes, what, am I never going to be able to play piano again? <laughs> and I thought that shit was hilarious, man. I think my okay. dad laughed his ass off, too. Uh, but that was, you know, that's fucking 20-plus years ago now, man. Oh, yeah, Quinn's killing it. And then uh, essentially, <laughs> you know, he essentially tells me he's Blade. Frost calms him down. And then him and the chick, like, are in the car rubbing sunscreen on, I guess. And then they go get Some the guy. Yeah. yeah. And then they go get the well, that uh, the elite. And they burn him in the sun. I don't oh, know. I man. Look for the slap. You slap me, I'm going to burn you in the sun. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the way to get him back, man. Yeah, burn him. That kind of and he, I yeah, believe he had that you one. insulted me for not being a real vampire. Sorry about that. Uh, Boom. But, uh, yeah, but I think we'll be okay. And he also, yeah. like, he rips his teeth out also before he oh. does that. Why, why did, I guess he did that uh, just because, because uh, right was, in the next scene, he gives him, you know, what yeah, did you do with this guy? Here's what the fuck I did with him, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's 100% what happened right there. He's trying to intimidate him. But uh, I don't know. I feel like the lead deserved jock. I mean, would that be your go-to? Say you're a vampire, you get slapped. You taking him outside and burning him alive? Yeah, he deserved that. Yeah, yeah he deserved yeah, that. Definitely. I'm going to agree with that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, That's the ultimate yeah, I thing that a vampire that. can fear is daylight. Yeah, I mean, you didn't, like I said, you just don't go slapping people around, man. You don't slap anybody without expecting some, without expecting some, like, some real, uh, some real foul shit to happen to you. Yeah. Yeah, so now uh he all shows up and he tells when he gets in the boardroom he's like i need 12 volunteers and then he just throws the teeth like you said it's like you know that was a solid scene like i'm in on that guy in that scene that was a good one i wish he'd yeah. do something with some his hair <laughs> <laughs> but, put on uh, a then, suit or something dog put on a suit or something yeah, and then sit go. down like that you know yeah, then Blade, he gives Whistler the hard driving guy, and then Karen randomly stole some stuff from the hospital, and now she's making vampire explosives. And then, uh, again, just met her, and he, she's like, hey, what's wrong with him? And Blade's like, he has cancer. And I'm like, whoa, this is out of left field. Like, where, who the fuck, did y'all just write this in? Right, with Whistler? Yeah, it was like random as hell. He has cancer, by the way. Like, what? <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. <clears throat> he's sitting there. Uh, he was smoking and drinking Jack earlier. I mean, you know, a good 50 years of that. I mean, you know, I guess so. Yeah. But then uh, essentially, I mean, I'm still trying to figure out how did, how does this chick know how to make vampire explosives? Like, are we sure this is? You don't know what her major was, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe she like majored in like uh like vampire. Hey, what college yeah. they may chemical, offer some chemical course, warfare? Though. I don't know. Yeah, then Whistler tells her she has a day or two before she turns, and then uh, Blade goes to get a serum. <laughs> Blade goes to link up with the guy for a serum, and this is when he meets Deacon Frost in the daylight, and uh, he holds that girl hostage. And um, he throws the girl through, like, some kind of food stand. She's good. Like, she's fine. And then, you know, <laughs> period, and Blade goes and saves her. 
Dead. Overall, like, is this one of the – Jack, what's your thoughts on this scene? Just give me, like, an overall, because there's a lot to dig up there. This is definitely one of those scenes where Wesley Snipes was like, wait, 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 no, nah, no. Nah. See, he wouldn't say, but he would he would just be like, fuck that, you know? Yeah, yeah. So this is yeah, so this was obviously one of those Wesley Snipe changes. But um I mean I mean I thought the meeting was lame. I mean, I yeah, I mean yeah, I felt like there there was I felt like there was definitely like a cooler way that they could have like met for the first time. But I think that it was like the whole, you know, like, cause didn't doesn't Wesley Snipes like doesn't he try to shoot him and then like Buddy like dodges the bullet? Like they have, yeah, like, he dodged it. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, so I think a lot of that was more so meant to show off like the uh, the special effects behind it. But yeah, but this scene was probably uh was probably useless. I think didn't really didn't really yeah, do and, a whole lot to like really do anything. Yeah, and don't tell me that uh. You're trying to kill me, but y'all need me at the same time because y'all are trying to be like me. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So then back at Blade HQ, Karen's trying to make some sort of cure. She says, and then I mean, Frost is all of a sudden back at Blade HQ. He, they're whooping Whistler's ass. They bite him up, and then Blade <laughs> back up, and like Whistler's like, "Kill me," and he's like, "Nah." And essentially, he's like, give me the damn gun. Like, I mean, Whistler, I guess, you know, that's going out like a G. But uh, would he have turned, y'all think? So, but well, this is the thing. Because when uh, when the second movie happens, he's alive. So, so when he shot himself, maybe he was already turning. You know, maybe he because they bit him yeah, up. They, they had been turning him, and then they came. So I guess in the second, they come back and kidnap him anyway for the second yeah, movie spot. I guess that's yeah. how it had to happen. They come pick up his body, heal him up. I guess with some vampire blood or something. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, maybe yeah. was it's not a vampire in the second one. Like they saved him. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. Really, really iffy. Really iffy on what really happens from this, from that moment to the second, to the second one. But um, I don't know. Just really, I don't know. That's like a plot hole. But I guess it, as far as this, with this first movie goes, uh, yeah, I think uh, if he if he shot himself in the head, he shouldn't have turned. He should have been dead. Yeah, but you know, got to be there for the second one. So. Uh... Essentially, he t before Wester kills himself or doesn't kill himself, whatever happens, he tells Blade, "Don't go after him because they need his blood because he deciphered it." Like in the Vampire Bible, like they're saying, Blade is the chosen one. And obviously, the next scene after that in the action movie is somebody loading all their guns up and getting ready to go fight. Yeah. But I'm, I'm out of ten, I'm gonna give this like a six and a half on as far as like loading guns up scene. I feel like I needed more stuff loaded up. Well, I mean, yeah, because I mean, because essentially he was supposed to be going to war, so he, like he should have had a lot more. Uh, a lot. Like of I need grenades. I need like more ammo. Yeah. I need knives. I need all kind of shit. Like I need more stakes. Yeah. Definitely. So Blade comes in and he's riding a motorcycle instead of his car, and I guess somehow gets into the building. With his motorcycle quietly, so I guess he pushed his motorcycle into the building and then, like, got into a spot, then turned it on. That seems like a little bit much. You could just come in there whooping ass. I mean, maybe he might have flew or something. Maybe he was flying. Who knows? But uh, right before this, Frost is talking shit to Karen about he, he, how he wants to bang her, essentially. And then she's like, she made a cure for someone turned, and she's talking shit about he, he has a bite on his neck and he's turned. And then uh, Quinn tells Deacon that Blade's there, and he's like, he's a monster. And then Blade's just wiping the floor with, I guess these are humans. They're not burning up. So Blade's just killing humans that are there to protect the, uh... So, like, how did they find these guys? Is it, like, a, I guess a Craigslist, like, vampire guard needed? Yeah, I think, uh, like, what did Blade, how did Blade describe the familiars earlier? He said these are people that, uh people that are doing, they do stuff for vampires under the promise that they'll be vampires. So maybe that's just what it was. Since it was so many of them, maybe they just all had like familiars and they were like, okay, well, 
you're going to get your asses kicked by Blade, but if you guys rent interference for us for a little bit, you know, we'll turn you into vampire. If Blade, if Blade doesn't kill you all. Yeah. Blade's probably going to kill. Yeah. But uh, Blade continues to whoop ass. He even used Karen's exploding juice on two vampires who pop up like one of those things from The Thing. And uh, Blade walks into an all-white room where Sana Lathan, his mom, I don't remember her name. What's, what's her name in the movie? Uh, I think it was like Vanessa or something like that. Yeah, well, his mom, either way. <laughs> so was like, can we talk about their relationship? This is kind of weird. She, she's making it seem like she wants to bang them. They have a lot of sexual tension. Well, she's a vampire. She's a vampire at this point, so it's like it's not really his mom. And then to who knows, Wesley Snipes was probably like, hey, you know, I mean, shoot, I'm here, you here. You know, why don't you try to do this? And why don't you try to, you know, try to give me a little bit. You know, I'm going to be chained up. Well, just go ahead and try to give me a little bit. Yeah, it's a, it's a really odd relationship. But essentially, he's devastated. She tricks him. And she looks kind of upset. Like, maybe in one part of the script, she, like, helped him. But she looks kind of upset right here in this scene. But later on, she's just like, fuck it, I'm in. Yeah. And then uh, Karen and Blade are taken to some kind of underground vampire temple called the Temple of Eternal Night. Mm -hmm. And uh, Quinn explains to Blade why there's, why vampire elites are all there. Essentially, they need his blood. And Frost talks shit, even Blade's sword, threats to cutting Quinn's arm off as a joke. Which, I mean, I'm still giving Quinn's, like, killing in this movie. That guy who plays Quinn. Yeah. Like, I'm all in on everything. He's like a good sixth man. Like, he's like Lou Williams coming out there, giving you some solid points. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, essentially, they force the vampire elites into position. And, you know, they put Blade in some kind of, some kind of rock that, I guess, I guess they prepared. Because it looks too, it has, like, Velcro straps. And like razor blades from now, so I guess they prepared for him to take his blood. Mm -hmm. And they throw they throw Karen into a hole with her, that guy from the beginning. Yeah. So yeah. like I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Like, I'm still why is he there? Uh, why was he made? Just happenstance. She, she didn't give a just shit, but it could be a random person. Like a bigger zombie. This you could have had some kind of. I don't know. You didn't need him back. I just thought that was kind of lame. But she didn't uh, give it. Yeah, just happenstance, I guess. You know, you turn him into a turn him into a ghoul or something, and yeah, he's like a zombie vampire. Yeah, and you and just and you feed him every now and then, throw him down in the bottom of his, in a little pit, and just feed him every now and then. So it's like he had turned into like a little ghoul by that point. Okay. <laughs> so uh, you know, I think that um. Yeah, that dude was, he was definitely, uh, he wasn't needed at that point, but hey. hey I mean. Yeah, I mean, we just got to the best part where um, yeah. they throw Dr. Karen into the hole with her ex-boyfriend, the doctor from before. And like okay. we were saying, he's not <laughs> needed. Like, he's definitely no, not. No, 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 no. They didn't need to make, the, make me try to believe that they were doing something ever, but. Uh, he yeah. doesn't care. And then she escapes with like a bone. And that's like it. She just gets a bone and she climbs up a hole with a bone. Now she's yeah. like a Indiana Jones. Yeah. This lady can do it all. And uh, like I said, and then she frees Blade. Can we talk about like, Blade? Like his mom, I'm just one more time. Like, she's doing some really weird stuff in this movie overall. Like, are we sure we needed all this sexual stuff between Blade and his mom? Let me know. No, we didn't. We didn't need it, but like I said, man, when you got Wesley Snipes in there, man, it's like, man, she What do you mean exactly? She's just like rubbing on his lips. She's getting all close, like she's trying to make out with him. She had just like some sexual tension there for sure. <laughs> yeah, man, she's a vampire at that point, you know. So she was like, she told him. No, she was, see like, oh, the oh, vampire yeah. thing. They make it really sensual for some reason, you know, like over the top. Yeah. Like, what is that yeah, all about? Like, is that a part of the <laughs> vampire life? I don't know. But uh, essentially, they start the uh, ceremony, and then uh, like blade bleeds, and it bleeds on the guy's heads, and then Frost becomes like the blood demon or blood god. The blood so, god is what they're trying to summon, right? Yeah, blood god. So 
what are y'all's thoughts? Like, just either one of y'all, what's y'all's thoughts on the overall process of this? It seems kind of pretty simple. It seems like someone else would have done this by now. All you got to do is sacrifice a guy? Like somebody 12 else would have kicked somebody into a pit by now, dog, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry, man. It's just like, it's yeah. Right. yeah, but uh, <laughs> oh, the ceremony completes, and like I said, Frost the Blood guy, and then Blade jumps down from like three stories and starts whooping all the Frost henchmen's ass. Yeah, you know, takes his sword out of the wall, cuts somebody up. I mean, and then Quinn runs up on him, and he was in some kind of like zip tie or something, or something. And he cuts Quinn's head off quick. Over, done. Quinn, you're not. <laughs> The six hey, into the bench. And why is Quinn dressed like a like a Vegas like rock star or something in this scene? You know, like, <laughs> like yeah, man, I'm gonna be a nasty god. It's like, what the fuck is going on? So like, that's I mean, what you picture it as, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, and then while he, after he kills Quinn, one of the best parts, he he catches Quinn's sunglasses that don't vaporize and puts yeah. them on for the rest of the fight. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's an that's a eight, eight and a half out of ten action scene for me. Yeah. Like, you kill someone, take their sunglasses, look cool as fuck, kill some more people, I'm in. I yeah, like Winston that, yeah. like Winston Snipes was like, yeah, I'm going to kill this. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to cut his head off. And then I'm going to put his glasses on. And I'm going to fight the rest of the movie with his glasses on. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, all right, man. All right, yeah, right. That sounds, sounds fun. What's better, <laughs> taking somebody's weapon that they tried to kill you with and then killing them with it or taking their glasses and killing other people with it after. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But uh, I guess, Jock, I, I guess it'll be easy to do this one. So what's your thoughts on the final fight and the ending of the movie? Um, definitely would have been a lot better if they had a guy that could, like, actually fight Wesley Snipes and his end. <laughs> because, because uh, really, because all all this guy does, he 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 jumps. He he did like a front flip. He gets some little tubes thrown at him, and then he jumps again and gets <laughs> thrown yeah, at him. A lot of jumping, and, and then that's the end of it. So yeah, so they have a lot of uh, high wires. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. They were at a budget, and they were like, "Fuck it, just get some high wires and throw this guy around around Blade." Like, yeah. what about Daniel? Like, doing a lot of good fight choreography. You want to use that? Nah, just use the high wire. Yeah. yeah, like Jock said, I mean, get somebody that can use this style. People flying around, kicking. I mean, Jesus Christ. Fork out the extra $5 million to get Jet Li, man. And then this would make the flying around aspect and kicking and punching, flying around, believable. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know, what would you what would you rate that final scene like out of a final movie action scene? See, I'm gonna give it like a five out of ten. <laughs> yeah, I probably I'd have gave it like I'm probably give it like a three. Oh, like a three. Fuck. yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'd probably give it like a three. Yeah, yeah could have yeah. been better. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess I'll just go in the middle, man. A four. I mean, I don't think it was as bad of as as a three, but then when you think about it, I mean. I mean, it wasn't I mean, good, man. It, you know, it just wasn't good. There were other scenes that were so much cooler than this. Yeah, I'm in on yeah. every other fight scene, almost except for this one. Yeah, I mean, and because this is even, supposed to be the ultimate, like blood god sacrifice. It's supposed to be the yeah, ultimate, yeah. like yeah, yeah. Because all of that, because even all of the interactions that Blade has with Quinn are like way more, like way. More, I, I was way more into those. Yeah. Those, interactions and those conversations then the final fight in the end he ground he ground his face on the subway tracks that was yeah, more intense yeah. than that yeah, yeah. But, yeah, you know so uh, i guess we'll go ahead and get into the best scene i got a couple nominations uh the opening scene in the uh the blood uh sprinkler club that's epic he's cutting yeah. people up you get the sparkles. <laughs> and then uh, the Whistler saving him. Like, it was kind of weird because I thought it was a truck, but then it ended up being him. But I was in on that. Yeah. Whole yeah. Like, I'm in on too. that. 
So, uh, John, you have anything you want? Any scenes you wanted to add before we pick a winner? Uh, my favorite scene is the intro because I thought it was just like it was a cool way that they introduced Blade. When uh, they're like, "Oh shit, who is that? It's him! It's him!" Mm-hmm. I thought that was dope as hell. And then the fact that he turned around, and he like cleared that whole club out, killed like thirty vampires. You know, cut buddies, cut buddies' arm off, and then set him on fire. I just thought that was pretty dope. <laughs> All right, what about you, Liam? Got a yeah, I scene? guess uh, it class of. I mean, I don't know. I'll just uh, shout out two real quick. I mean, you already kind of did one. Uh, you know, the Whistler busting in, but uh, right before that, how Donna Logue said, "You know, you cut my hand off, bro, but you know, it's cool, man." Cause I got another one. He goes, you think I would play piano again, man? I just think uh, it kind of uh, those kind of humor points in this movie are really key that they do have. They have a lot of funny shit in this movie, and uh, it really breaks up the, uh, you know, maybe sometimes unbelievable stuff that's going on. And. Um, also, uh, I really like the scene to where she's in the elevator and she just fully realize it makes you realize too that man, anyone you're standing like within shoulders length of could be a vampire in this world, at least, you know? Yeah. So uh, I think so, I'm gonna go, my winner was the opening scene. Yeah, well, I mean, blood rave, that's pretty hard to top, so. <laughs> yeah, so we're all in agreement of what, like, the best scene was, that opening scene, the introduction to Blade. So, uh, hey, have best you of- guys ever listened to the song just by itself? It's like a 15-minute yeah. song. <laughs> 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 you can get really intense. Like, say you need to work out, I guarantee you would knock everything out if you listen to that song. <laughs> nice. But uh, best line, I got a couple of uh Mm. Deacon Cross to the vampire elite when he's threatening him. He's like, you may, co- you may wake up one day finding yourself extinct. I was like, all right, that's cool. I mean, that would mean he's extinct also, but that's cool. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> messed up, but... Yeah. yeah. And Blade to Karen, he's like, we have... He's talking about Whistler. He's like, we have a good arrangement. He makes the guns or weapons. I use them. Oh, that's... I like that. I mean, it's so simple, but it's good. Oh, yeah. And then one more was, uh, I'll tell you what we are. We are the top of the fucking food chain. It's Deacon when he's talking to Karen after he's uh, captain. Him. But uh, <laughs> Liam, you got anyone to add? My favorite one, I mean, it's the essential blade. It's just, uh, you know, there, he's like, you better be careful. There's, uh, you know, somebody said, I think maybe Wilson's like, there's vamp, you know, they're they're out tonight. And she's like, or he's like, there's more important, or he, he's like, there's more scary things to worry about than vampires out tonight. And she's like, what? He goes, me. And he's like, <laughs> does the sword, I mean, when Wesley Snipes does the sword put away, he sheathes his sword. <laughs> I mean, and then says a one liner, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, that's actually where we go. I mean, yeah. He, yeah, even as a kid, it brought me back to where I was like, wow. You know, even <laughs> even now. <laughs> like a kid, you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. What about you, Jock? That's a good one. What about you, Jock? Uh, my favorite one was the one where he's like, um, uh, some motherfucker's always trying to skate uphill. And it's like, <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but <laughs> that's some cold shit. That's some cold <laughs> shit to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was all Wesley Snipes. Like he just randomly was putting the shit together. Yeah, don't yeah, even know what that's that means. So crazy how you said he got to do it. He got to say that if he wanted to. Like he had a book of one liners he was doing at night. He was like, Oh, oh yeah, we- I think that feel. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what if you just got to do a movie full of one liners? What would you do? And this is what oh, you, you got to do. You'd be Arnold Schwarzenegger. And a lot of like, yeah. I was gonna say that you'd study a, a few Arnold action movies because he yeah. he does it. Yeah, so I guess I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Liam's actually. Uh, if y'all got it on here, there are worst things out tonight, like what, like me, like I'm in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was fucking. Puts uh, away the sword. 
Yeah, then the ice skate uphill was great also. Because what does that even mean? I don't even <laughs> – it's hard. Hey, yeah, it's uh, – back in my day, we had to walk to school uphill both ways. Yeah. Okay. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think the MVP of this movie is like a runaway winner. I think Wesley Snipes is the winner of this movie. Yeah. Like, he's at the peak Hollywood point. He can be – he could probably do whatever he wanted after this movie. Like, this is it. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Even though I think, you know, White Men Can't Jump is a better movie and probably one of his best ones, I'd probably say this is still probably a higher point of his career. But you can tell he enjoys playing, like, a fucking action role. And it's like, before this, I guess it was Demolition Man. And, I mean, he enjoys playing this type of role to where he gets to smile and then kill people. I mean, you know, he loves that type of shit, man. And he deserved it. And he – no one else could have done it as cool as this, man. That's why they made a bunch of them. Yeah. Same for you, Jock. Yeah, I agree. Wesley Snipes, yeah, he's the MVP. Like this, uh, this was his role. Um, there during this time frame, there was nobody else that could have played Blade but him. And the way he did it, and like with the charisma, and uh, and like yeah. the legit martial arts skills, because I mean he's a legit like Woo! dude knows his he knows his stuff. Like you know, so he wasn't like no, uh, it wasn't fake. It wasn't fake with him. So yeah, he definitely um, he's the MVP. Yeah, you, you got to come away from this, like, straight impressed by the choreography that he's able to do, you know? I mean. Yeah, yeah it was a uh, – yeah, it was a uh, – he definitely – there's no way – there's not even really anyone who comes close. It's like a unanimous MVP. Like, there were no other first-place votes. Like, all other of than uh, Stephen Dorff smoking a cigarette yeah, and then later yeah. securing a uh, quitting cigarettes campaign. Quitting cigarettes hey. by electronic cigarette smoking. Yeah, he had a couple second place votes for that one. It's, they no, thought he there. looked so good smoking a cigarette. They're like, we can also make him a sexy vampire smoking a cigarette. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> uh, Jock, do you have anything you want to add about the movie? Um, I just think that, uh, I think that we kind of forget, too, that this was like one of the first movies that I think Marvel – when Marvel started making comic book movies again, that this is like the first movie that they made that they actually made money off of and probably gave them the idea like, oh shit, we can make movies doing doing these kind of movies now. Cause like up until this point, um, when you think about like the type of movies that they were making, like they did, they had like the, um, the Dolph Lundgren Punisher movie. I don't know if you guys ever saw that, but it was like really, really bad. What? Uh, yeah, they had a yeah, yeah, they had a Punisher movie with Dolph Lundgren in it. Yeah. So he really, really played bad. him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay, I need uh, to y'all need to tell yeah, me YouTube about it. that. Yeah, YouTube it. Yeah, YouTube it, bro. It's, it was all right, horrible. All right. Um No, that's great. A, uh, no, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I need like to look that really up. Bad, uh, they had like a really bad <laughs> Captain America movie that they did, and then they had like a really bad like Spider Man TV show that was like from the seventies or some shit. So you know, Marvel had like a had failed miserably up until that point. And then uh, even too, when you think about like um uh, like thinking about it from like the the fact that this was like a black superhero, you know. Yes. You had um yeah, because before that you they had took like, a gamble, Meteor man. Man. Yeah, like before that you had like Meteor Man and Blank Man and shit like that, like stuff that was like spoof, like spoof yeah, type. Like that. Shit like that. Yeah, nothing hey, that was one like one time real can we please do stuff. one time for Meteor Man, please. One time for Meteor Man. I saw it in theaters. My mom took me. I made her take me two or three times, dog. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think that um, Blade, when you think about it from that perspective, Blade was actually kind of ahead of his time because, like, even now, you, you know, you sit back, you look at movies, and you're always hearing stuff about movies not being diverse. And, you know, like, oh, like, Black That's Panther was such a huge deal. Black Panther was such a huge deal because it had, like, a black cast. But it was like, but if you think about it, like, shit, 20 years before that, you had Blade. So, yeah, you know, and then the secondary role was also another it was a black woman. And then yeah, uh, yeah. Um, the guy who helps him out was a white guy, you know. Yeah. Okay, so. So, did you have anything you want to add to it then? I mean, I, I uh, you know, I, I think he hit the nail on the head. Uh, this is one of the first black, uh, movies to where an African-American man was the 
superstar role. Like, you know, as a kid growing up, I think my dad had just shown me Demolition Man or something like that. That's why I keep saying that. Um, I thought Wesley mm-hmm. Snipes was as cool as you could possibly get. Man. And uh, I loved Taco Bell in the 90s growing up. I grew up on that. And they had oh, plenty oh, yeah, of that. promotions with Demolition Man and shit. I mean, yeah. So I just grew up loving Wesley Snipes. I mean, like you said earlier, his martial arts skills, I mean, it's clear. I mean, this guy did what he could to learn to become the role. And I mean, you see him on White Man Can't Jump and it's just kind of a, a his funnier side. You know, it's, it's not him needing to kill a bunch of guys. But I mean, you see him in uh, when he wants to be a villain. He, it's one of my favorite villain types because he's funny too. Yeah, what was the uh, um, the New York movie uh, he's in? Oh, awesome it's uh, New Jack City. New Jack City. Oh, yeah, yeah, New yeah, Jack yeah, City. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Epic. <laughs> Epic. Yeah, it was another movie too. He was in uh, where he was like uh, he was kicking people's ass like on an airplane. Uh, it's like yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I don't know. Um, the name. It's either like Passenger. executive decision Passenger or something. like Air Force One or Passenger 57 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Passenger, Passenger 57. 57. Yeah. There you go. So, I mean, so, you know, he did his thing. And then, and then remember, too, remember he was in that first Major League movie, which that should be one of the movies we should we should do next. We should do Major League. Woo! Okay. He was uh, Willie Mays Hayes. Yeah, Willie Mays Hayes, man. They go, who is this guy? They're like, I don't know. He wasn't invited. So he just shows up to spring training, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, overall, you know, played a solid movie. Could have ended better. But, uh, Jack, you want to tell us what you're doing for of next course. week's movie? Yeah, so, uh, so, yeah, my choice for uh, next week's movie is uh, Leon the Professional. With, Ooh. Uh, yeah, I don't even know the actor's name. He's the French guy. But, uh, oh, I you know. know. And a young, and, and a young Natalie, Natalie Portman. Portman. Yeah, and a young Natalie Portman. So that's my movie for uh, next week. What made you choose that? Uh, man, I just wanted to. I wanted to do something that I hadn't seen in a long time, and I wanted yeah. it to. I wanted it to be something that was kind of like uh, like uh, like like Hitmany. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like kind of like an action drama type thing. So hey, make you understand why I kill people, and this is how you do it, and. That's yeah. a that's a cool yeah. choice, man. Good pick. Yeah. yeah, I'm in on it. I'm ready. But uh, I guess we're gonna uh, go off. So, uh, there, like I said, I know I forgot. Uh, so with Blade, just before we get off, the new I forgot to mention the new Blade, Marshall Marshall Ali. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you guys think of, before we get off? What, just a quick thought on that uh, casting as the new Blade. Um, I think that's a good. I think it's a good selection, and I think too, like enough time has passed, enough time has passed from like the Blade, the original Blade movies that you need to do one that's a little more up to date. Because this movie, it really, I mean, it's a good movie, but when you look at some of the stuff that yeah. goes on in this movie, it's kind of outdated. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like '90s cool isn't tw- isn't 2020s cool. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to say that the beginning of this movie, it took me a little while to get back into it because I was like, yeah. man, this is kind of like hokey as fuck right now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. yeah, but, but um, I mean, I think enough, definitely. That's, you don't know what yeah. you were thinking back in the day, though. Right, right. But definitely enough time has passed for where, um, and the guy, Marshall Ali, man, he's a really good actor. He's a really good actor. And um, yeah. I feel like if anybody, if anybody could play, can play Blade, I mean, that guy's cool enough to where he could play Blade. Because Blade's such a cool character. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in agreement. So uh, I guess. Uh, oh, thank- oh, oh. But, hey, and there was, there was one thing too. There was one thing too that um, I guess I probably should have added that with the fun facts. But. What was it? Go ahead. Uh well, so uh, originally when this movie when this movie ended that they had a uh, an end scenes credit that they ended up cutting because uh it was something something ended up happening with the contract rights or something like that but uh but the end of the movie was supposed to end with uh the the character Morpheus Morbius from um oh. <laughs> yeah from the spy yeah. Yeah, from Morbius for a second I was like Matrix and Blade <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Morbius, Morbius, the vampire from the Spider-Man uh, comics yeah. cartoon was supposed to be in it. 
but uh, they ended okay. up uh, cut the hey, scene like right before because uh, that was supposed to lead into the second one, but they didn't have the rights to the character or something like that, so they couldn't do it. But um, oh, yeah. if you could tie that you know, universe, I mean, they wish they could have tied that universe with as much money as Spider Man made. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I guess uh, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll catch you guys next week. All right. All right, gentlemen. I had a great time. I'll see you next time.